This is Keith Thompson, and I'd like to thank you all for following me over to my new channel. To all of you who've been on this journey with me, uh, there's nothing different or going to be different about this channel. I primarily created this channel simply because my other channel was, with, uh, was being attacked by YouTube, and I felt like it was time for a change. So, the name of this channel is Sola Scriptura, and I want to talk about the reason as to why I, I chose that name out of the five solas. Particularly, the reason I chose that name instead of the other ones was simply because Scripture alone has been my foundation throughout my life, my Christian walk, throughout my Christian walk in regards to the sharing of the gospel, evangelism. And one of the greatest problems I've had to face when sharing the gospel with a sinner, a lost sinner, is that they refuse to. They refuse, simply refuse to acknowledge the foundation by which I stand on, and that is scripture alone. Let me give you an example. The last person I tried to share the gospel with is a person who was a false professing Christian. Okay, they told me they've been saved for many years, um, decades. Okay, uh, they made no, their only profession of faith was that they know God. Okay, um, now I know this person. I know this person is lost. Okay, I know this person believes heretical things. So I sought to correct this person as lovingly as possible by using the word of God. And they had a problem with that. Now, why did they have a problem with that? They had a problem with that because they refused to acknowledge the word of God solely as the sole authority of God. See, what you have to understand about sinners is, what you have to understand about false professing Christians is, they've all enacted a, a, a idol in their mind that they worship, Okay. And this is why Paul Washer says that Sunday is the greatest day of idolatry simply because everyone is in church worshiping a God they've created in their own imagination. Not a God of scripture, not a God of the Bible, but a, the God of their imagination. And this God of their imagination is perfectly fine with the way they live their life. He's perfectly fine with them. He loves them just as they are. Okay. He's okay with their mediocrity. He's okay with their lukewarmness. And this allows them to quiet their conscience enough to sleep at night. Okay. So they'll tell you, oh, I'm a Christian. I've been saved 30 years, 40 years. I know God. And you go, great. I know God too. I'm a Christian. Let's go to his word and talk about him. No, 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 no. I don't need, I don't need to hear that from you. I'm, I know God. And it's like, it's like this wall. Okay. They, and, and they refuse to stand on it. So if I were, and the reason why I chose Sola Scriptura is simply because if I were to have picked faith alone, if I tell this person, oh, it's by faith alone, they go, oh, great. Oh, praise God, faith alone, or by grace alone. Oh, yes, yes, grace alone, great. Oh, yes, that's beautiful. Christ alone, yes, Christ alone, yes, Christ alone. God to glory, to God be the glory alone. Yes, yes, to God be the glory alone. All that's fine. But when I say scripture alone, now we've got a problem. Because if they agree with that, then they also have to agree to the idea of going to it. And that's the problem, because if we go to scripture, if scripture is true, if scripture is the basis, then it's going to interfere exactly with what they've already created in their mind and what they already believe. And they have to put a wall up to block that. OK, and this is this is for me personally. Uh, this has been one of the biggest issues is 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 is, uh, is getting to the same point where I'm uh, being allowed to use scripture as where I'm coming from and what I stand on. OK. Scripture exposes heresy. It exposes there are false ideas about who God is. And they don't want that. Because when you start to do that, when you begin to expose the truth, you begin to break down the walls that they've created to protect themselves or to protect their own conscience. Okay? And so that's why they don't want that. And that's why I've chosen so the scripture because it's so important that scripture alone, okay, that we fall and we stand on that alone. Um, not our own preconceived notions, not our own desires, but what we find in the word of God. So I thank you all for joining me. I thank you all for following me. Uh, let's begin a journey, a new journey on this new channel. Um, again, it's uh, all of this is to give the Lord glory. And that's simply all it's about. So God bless. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Thank you. Now, I want to show you about something about the word of God in 15. We're going to look at 15, then we're going to jump over. Well, let's look at 16 and then we'll do the sandwich.
In 16, all scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. Now, I want to tell you something. If you tell me you believe the Bible is theonustos, if you believe that it is God breathed, I'm going to yawn. That hasn't told me anything about you yet. If you tell me it's inerrant, still, you haven't told me anything about you. If you tell me it's infallible, you haven't told me anything. The real question comes down to this. Is it sufficient? Is it sufficient? Everybody today, so many people I know. Yeah, the Bible is the word of God. The Bible is inspired. The Bible is infallible. The Bible is inerrant. Is it sufficient? Or do you have to add something to it? Whether it be your own thoughts, your own way of doing things, or some corrupt social strategy. Is the Bible sufficient? You see, so many people today and so, so many people, especially young men, the last 15 years saying, I'm reformed, I'm reformed, I'm reformed, I'm reformed. They didn't even know what that meant. They thought being reformed is that you had some academic grasp of Calvinism. Being reformed is sola scriptura. Scripture alone. That we build our life on Scripture. Is your soteriology biblical, reformed, wonderful? But is your doctrine a holiness? 